if we love Jesus, we will obey his commandments. When we obey his commandments, we express our love for our Lord and Savior Jesus in our life. What is his commandment? His commandment is very simple to remember, but at the same time, difficult to practice. <clears throat> his commandment is to love one another. Not loving others with a condition, but loving others the way Jesus has loved us. Love one another the way I have loved you. I know it's very difficult to love people without any conditions because we are so often tuned and programmed to love people based on certain conditions that we put over their lives. <clears throat> but Jesus is asking us to love people without any conditions. It is difficult, but at the same time, it is doable. When we abide in Jesus, when we abide in His Word, when we abide in His love, we can experience His love. His love can renew our mind and heart. And out of that, we can love God and love people. Amen? When we abide in Him, when we abide in His Word, when we abide in His, in His love, we can experience His love. And out of that, we can love one another the way Jesus has loved. And thus, we can fulfill the new commandment Jesus has given us and thus we can prove to the world that we are the disciples of Jesus. Now, I want to expound this truth to uh, in, in a larger manner through a story. <clears throat> now, the story is from uh, book, of, uh, uh, book of Luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 31. This is a parable about the rich man and poor Lazarus. About the rich man and poor Lazarus. So in this story, uh, we, can, uh, we can find some interesting truths for us to learn and practice, especially in the season that we are living in. Amen. Not only in this season, but as long as we are alive, we should learn to practice this principle that we are going to learn from this story. When you read the story, we often see who's going where. Lazarus is going to heaven and, um, and uh, Richman is going to Hades or hell. Uh, and we <clears throat> often ignore or overlook the important uh, other important finer details which are in the story. And this morning I want to uh, uh, share these important finer details for us to learn so that we can practice these things in our life and be a blessing to the community that where God has placed us in. Now, the story goes like this. Two characters, Lazarus and Richman. Richman was rich. Why? Because he had everything in plenty. He had a big house. He had many servants. He had uh, horses, chariots, donkeys, camels. He had big farms. He had everything in plenty. And uh, he had uh, food in plenty and he was probably wasting food also in plenty. On the other hand, we had Lazarus who is right now poor, but also a beggar. Probably Lazarus was working with the rich man and uh, <clears throat> over the period of time, because of the sickness, he became good for nothing and the rich man ignored this Lazarus and Lazarus eventually became a beggar, uh, you know, <clears throat> and he was living out of the alms that he was receiving from people or the food which was coming out from the house of this rich man. The story goes like this. Rich man dies and poor man also dies. Probably the poor man died because of the sickness and hunger. A rich man probably would have died because of the high cholesterol and heart attack. So both reached in different different places. One reached to the father's to the Abraham's bosom. The other one uh, got awakened in Hades. Lazarus, Lazarus was in, in Abraham's bosom and rich man was in, in Hades. When rich man saw Lazarus in father Abraham's bosom, he couldn't uh, comprehend or he couldn't digest the fact how, uh, you know, how it is possible. And uh, he began to plead with, uh, with uh, father Abraham, even though 
the bible describes uh, you know he used to be a place of torment and fire and uh, and uh, you know he is beginning to you know see the father abraham and he was having a conversation it might appear to be that he is requesting and pleading with abraham's fa- fa- the father of uh, with father abraham but we can see there is a great wickedness and deceit in his approach that i want to show you and uh, we can learn something out of this uh, story now in uh, in uh, luke chapter 16 verse 24 uh, rich man begins to speak to abraham father then he cried out and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame this might appear to be a request you know and a sincerity of his heart but as the story progresses we can see the wickedness uh, the rich man is displaying over here now <clears throat> uh, what what father abraham is saying but abraham son remember that in your lifetime you received good things in your lifetime you received good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented besides uh, and besides all this between us uh, <clears throat> between us and between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from here from there to pass to us so he is saying it is difficult to cross over Abraham is saying it's difficult to cross over. See, uh, the rich man, he is not willing to take a no from Abraham's from father Abraham. He is not willing to take a no from father Abraham. He is saying, I beg you, therefore, father, that you would send send him to my father's house. That you would send him to my father's house. Why? Why? For I have five brothers. He may testify to them, lest they also. come to this place of torment now we can see his wickedness being revealed over here it may it may see a noble thought that he doesn't want <clears throat> the brothers to come over here it may look like a noble thought but the wickedness over here is he didn't mind lazarus to come from abram's bosom to the place of torment okay but he is minding his brothers to come over here this is where he is displaying his wickedness so in his in in lazarus in in the rich man's mind not only his wicked not only is arrogant but he was also full of pride he wants his servant to obey his command he wants his servant to fulfill his plan you know that is what that is how he is uh, uh, thinking about lazarus he is still thinking uh, about lazarus not being blessed person but he is thinking about lazarus he should serve me he should do what i am telling him to do that is how he is planning in his mind now what father abraham is responding how abraham is responding to lazarus is very important for us to learn now in this father abraham is saying abraham said to him they have moses and the prophet let them hear them let they have moses and the prophet let them hear them what does it mean it means they have the first five books and the prophet that means they have the torah let them hear torah let them read torah and understand and change their ways again he is not willing to take no from father abraham he is saying no father abraham but if 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 one goes to them from the dead they will repent if one goes to them from the dead they will repent see the response of father abraham but he said to him if if they do not hear moses and the prophets neither they will be persuaded though one rise from the dead so he's very simply father abraham is saying you know if they don't trust if they don't understand if they don't read and understand or change their ways or repent no matter a big miracle cannot change their lives no matter even someone's dead going to them it will not change their heart now this was true in real lazarus case when uh, the real lazarus on top talking about mary and martha's brother lazarus when he was dead and buried for four days <clears throat> jesus went and raised him from the dead 
Now, when he raised him from the dead, the simple people, you know, family members, they were all happy, believed in Lazarus, and believed in Jesus because of the, the miracle they did. But the Pharisees, the Pharisees who saw the miracles, who heard that people are going to Jesus instead of uh, they coming to him, they were, they were feeling jealous and they wanted to kill Jesus and Lazarus for that. They wanted to kill Jesus and Lazarus for that. Uh, for this miracle so so a miracle cannot change heart in that sense if our if our heart is hardened if we if you read Torah and if you are not able to change our mind okay probably no amount of miracles can change our heart also that is what father Abraham is saying now from this story a couple of things that we can learn one is <clears throat> from this from this uh, from rich, rich man's uh, attitude he was definitely a wicked guy, okay. Even though he appeared to be nice, but there, there was a deceit in his in his asking, and he didn't mind Lazarus to, to come to the place of Hades, but he wanted his brothers to be away from this thing. These are the wickedness that we can see over here. That's one thing. And also, he was not happy that Lazarus was blessed. You know, sometimes when uh, when we see someone uh, you know blessed, uh, doing better than us. How does we feel? What do we feel in our heart? If you if, if are feeling happy about it, we are, definitely our heart is good. But if we feel something contrary to happiness, maybe jealous or some kind of deceit or wickedness that we are experiencing in our heart, maybe we need to really ask God to help us. Now, in, in the case of rich man, two things he could have done. Two things he could have done. Probably he would have been happy for Lazarus being in Abraham's bosom which he did not do that and while he was alive he could have he could have learned from the book of uh, uh, the, the Moses and the prophet that means he could have learned from Torah which he ignored to do that now in this story father Abraham is reminding uh, uh, <clears throat> about he's talking about Moses and prophets twice talking about Moses and prophets twice what does it mean? What does Moses and Prophet mean? What does Torah mean? In essence, in essence, Torah talks about, you know, one particular thing which we call as a golden principle and it is written in Mark, sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. We call it as a golden principle. This is the law and prophets. This is the law and the prophets. It goes like this. Whatever you want men to do to you, Whatever you want men do to you, you do to them. Whatever you want men to do to you, you do to them. This is the golden principle which the rich man failed to do when he was alive to Lazarus. If he was sick, if he was sick, he would expected, if he would expected people to come and serve him. Now he's he's in a place of torment. He wanted Lazarus to come and serve him, but when when Lazarus was in place of torment, he was not willing to go and even offer some kind of help or offer some kind of uh, uh, you know for provision for this person. He left him to die on the road. He did not do what Moses and prophets told him to do in the Bible in Torah. Now, it is very important for us to learn this principle, church. This is a golden principle. This is the essence of the Bible. One is to love God unconditionally. In the Old Testament, puts it puts in a, in, a, in, a, in a way, we call it a golden principle. <clears throat> you do to others as you want others to do to you. Amen? You do to others as you want others to do to you. So when we live like this, okay, I believe we will bring tremendous peace in a community where we are living. Imagine the whole community is practicing this golden principle. I believe nobody would want to go abroad to make money. Or why? Because everybody would find peace and satisfaction in a community living like this. And I believe church can be a best place, you know, to grow up like this. And eventually, you know, the light will shine through us and we can impact the nation we are living in 
so now <clears throat> now there is a crisis that all of us are going through you know not only uh, the world even the church has experienced a lot of crisis we are going through but even in this crisis we can live by this principle do unto others as you want others do unto you you know whatever way that we can be a help for others we can be a help for others now the church is we are not able to gather together to serve but in this way we can serve one another and by doing that we are worshiping our lord and we are expressing our love for our jesus i know it can be difficult but at the same time if you abide in him abide in his love abide in his word his love and his word will change us to love one another now matthew chapter 7 12 says about golden rule one more scripture i want to read matthew chapter 7 verse 13 talks something very interesting the scripture goes like this enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are so many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it now if you read this scripture we often uh, it's sorry not if you read this scripture when we read this scripture without a uh, context we often uh, think uh, jesus is the narrow way you know we 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 relate this story to jesus is the way narrow way and only in jesus we can uh, have uh, uh, salvation yes i believe that but i don't completely believe jesus is the narrow way i believe jesus is the only way but i also believe jesus is a broad way that means whoever believes in him whoever believes in him you know to them he gives them uh the status of being the children of god amen who ever receives or believes in jesus to them he calls his own so it is not for few people it is for all of us he is the only way at the same time he's broad way but what is this narrow way narrow way talks about narrow gate talks about narrow gate talks about something in correlation to chapter verse 12 in, in correlation to verse 12 now let's read verse 12 and 13 together and we will have a, a different understanding of this scripture whatever you want men to do to you verse 12 i'm reading matthew chapter 7 verse 12 whatever you want men do to you do also to them for this is the law and prophets okay if you remove the subtitle from the bible it is all like one letter is was, was written this is the this is the narrow gate this is the narrow gate narrow gate is to practice the principle of golden rule in our life it is difficult there are so many people who don't live by this golden rule golden principle they live for themselves they do things according to their uh, 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 they live life according to their plans according to their whims and fancies but there are few people there are few people who live like this that's what bible bible says so few few like uh, okay now let me read it read it enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it so there are so many people do life apart from this golden principle there are so many people there are very few people who live by this golden principle so i want our church to be like this i want i to be like this i want my family to be like this i want our church to be like this so we should learn to do to one another the way we want others to do to us when we do like this what is what we are doing we are finding life we are finding life this is the meaning of uh, narrow gate if we co- if we read 12 and 13 and 14 together we can see a different meaning all together yes jesus is the way he is the truth and the life but here the narrow gate talks about again i repeat he is the golden principle 
that we need to practice. It can be difficult. At the same time, if you abide in Jesus, in His Word, in His love, we can do what God has commanded us to do. Like I said, in this pandemic period, all of us have, come, have been confined in our house. Sometimes we have been complacent with being in the house, not knowing what is happening outside. There are so many people who are in different kinds of needs are there. If we look out, okay, if, if the rich man would have looked out and helped Lazarus, probably, you know, the story would be in a different way. But he, through the story, Jesus is teaching us something, you know, what he's teaching us. Do, do unto others as you want others do unto, it, unto you. So that is what Jesus is talking to us through this story. Now, this story is not only for this moment for us to practice. This golden principle is not only for this moment to practice. But as long as we are alive on this earth, when we live by it, what we are doing, we are loving people unconditionally. And the church will be a place where people can find comfort, where people can find life, uh, uh, you know, life and, they can, and the church can transform the lives of people who are entering the church. So that is how God, Jesus wants to live. So now I want uh, us to talk to our leaders, house church leaders and area pastors and speak to them and come together as one body. Now ask what we can do, how we can do, plan, pray and then uh, do what is required for us, do what, what we can do. Let us, let as a church, let us do what is required, required by us to do. And let us leave the rest to God and let God bring people into his kingdom. Let us do our part, what we can do, and let him do what he can do through our lives. Amen. So, again, I want to uh, close, close in this uh, statement. Let us do unto others what we want others do unto us. Amen. God bless you all.